Next up is uh, Sarah Sondag, the bridge preservation engineer at Minnesota DOT. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm going to talk a little bit about updating MnDOT's bridge worker formula. First, a little bit of background on the Minnesota DOT. We're divided into eight distinct districts. We have 20 bridge maintenance crews and approximately 150 bridge workers statewide, including some inspection resources. So you might ask, well, what is a bridge worker formula? To us, it's a mathematical method to attempt to quantify bridge maintenance staffing needs in terms of full-time equivalents. And I use the, the term full-time equivalents because we may not be able to address that gap or address that need with full-time employees. There may be other options um, through temporary workers or through contract maintenance to address that. Go through a little bit of background to the formula. In 1983, we started with a formula that was solely based on past production. It looked at the total number of bridges multiplied by the hours worked per bridge and the total number of culverts multiplied by the average hours worked per culvert divided by those total available hours that for per bridge worker per year. And those hours worked per bridge and per culvert were based on past historical data. In 1991, there was a task force that was created specifically because that formula was based on past production only and not on factors or physical factors of that bridge population. And so the job of that task force was to identify some quantifiable factors that would impact the maintenance needs for the structures. And the factors that they identified were average daily traffic, or ADT, the distance from the bridge crew location to that structure, so the distance they had to travel to maintain that bridge, the complexity, the size, and the condition of the structures within a certain district or maintenance area. And all those factors were combined and then again divided by the available hours per bridge worker. I'll go in a little more depth on each of these factors, but first talk a little bit about the reasons why we wanted to update this formula from 1991. Some of the concerns are this formula was only developed for bridge maintenance. It did not include bridge inspection needs, supervisory needs, or any non-bridge work. And a lot of that competes for the same resources. The available hours may not be representative. So for Minnesota, we have some limited times that we can work on our bridges. Typically, it's from sometime in April through October, possibly into November if we get some good weather. Um, but that limits the amount of time that we can perform certain types of activities. Also, we have uh, bridge workers that perform snow and ice duty. They're also involved in training and other activities, so that takes away from some of those hours, um, available hours. We're querying timesheet data to come up with a more representative number. Um, for current workforce. In addition, a lot of our structures are now seeing higher traffic levels. We've uh, changed design standards, and so we, we're seeing some different types of bridge designs. Some more complex structures have been added to our inventory, again, compelling that need to update the formula. We also have to recognize that there have been some improvements in standard details. Some of these details may require less maintenance. Um, some examples could be using elastomeric pads instead of different types of bearings, designing jointless bridges, looking at integrating fibers into concrete to hopefully control some cracking. Next, I'll talk a little bit about each one of the factors because each factor has a specific formula that's associated with that factor. And it usually consists of categories within that factor, so bridges that fit within that category, and then also empirical values that are assigned based on how much more maintenance might be needed because the bridge is in a certain category. So for example, for ADT, we divided the bridges into three different categories. Structures with less than 2,000 ADT, structures between 2 and 10,000 ADT, and then structures with greater than 10,000 ADT. And those empirical values then, which are represented by the 18, the 12, and the 8 in that formula, they are weighted due to the potentially increased traffic control that's needed, or perhaps the accelerated deterioration that comes with increased traffic levels. Now, with our current population of bridges, we're seeing a lot higher traffic levels than we potentially did in the 90s, right? So we have bridges now that are greater than 20,000, greater than 50,000, or greater than 100,000 vehicles in our metro areas. And so perhaps we need an additional category to identify the maintenance, the labor hours that are needed to maintain those types of structures. The distance factor. 
Again, that's divided into three different categories, bridges that are less than 30 miles from the bridge shop, bridges between 30 and 60 miles, and bridges that are greater than 60 miles. The empirical values then, that four, five, and six that are multiplied by those different cat number of bridges in those categories, are an indication of the time lost due to travel. But we have some cases where some districts that are, have a larger area where the bridge crew location might be greater than 90 miles away from that structure. So there may be a need for an additional factor if this is one of the factors that causes an impact on that calculated hours or more of an impact on that calculated hours. The size factor is based on deck area for deck bridges and roadway area for culverts. And it looks at a district average divided by the state average. And then this factor is combined with an average of all the other factors. We also have to consider some of our bridges that are larger size and have multiple lanes because it's a lot harder for a crew to close a center lane or the two center lanes to be able to perform that work. It takes a lot more traffic control and it takes a lot more labor hours. So we're considering um, adding some additional parameters to the formula that address some of those multi-lane structures that are harder to access and harder to close. Complexity factor. This is based on structure type, which makes sense. And the more complex of a structure you have, likely the more labor hours you need to maintain it. So for example, in blue are the certain types of structures that we had in the original formula. But as our design standards have changed, as our design types have changed, we needed to add a few more categories within these structure types identified by the formula. The empirical factors, the 30, the 28, et cetera, are basically associated with each structure type. And the more complex the structure, the more labor hours we need to maintain it. And we also need to consider historic bridges. Typically, a historic bridge will have some sort of maintenance plan that's um, associated with it and may require additional maintenance. It may also require special types of materials or special types of techniques to maintain it. So potentially, we need a separate category or a separate empirical value assigned to those historic bridges as well. Condition factor is based on the average condition of structures within a maintenance area or in a district and it's compared to the ideal condition rating of eight. Then there's a question that surrounds, well, what is that average, what represents that average condition rating? Is it the deck NBI? You know, a lot of our maintenance activities, a lot of our preservation actions are related to the deck NBI, when you might overlay, when you might patch. But there's other considerations. We perform maintenance on a lot of different components and a lot of different elements of the bridge. So should it be just related to the deck NBI? Should it be related to a combination of NBI ratings? Or should we have some other sort of condition metric or health metric that we're relating this formula to? The goal was to update the formula based on the current population of bridges. And as I explained in some of the previous slides, some of the challenges with the current factors and how they don't relate maybe or don't represent the current population of bridges. Once that those hours are calculated, it will identify the gap between what the formula calculates and what our crew forces are. And the, the idea is basically to communicate that need. Like I mentioned previously, we may not be able to fill that need with full-time employees, but we could look at other options to fill the gap of full-time equivalents. So we could look at temporary summer laborers or other temporary workers. We could look at contract maintenance options, such as negotiated maintenance contracts. We could also look at ways to prioritize that work. Um, those that provide some of the most benefit, or sometimes some of those bridges that are easier to access and we can get to a little bit easier, and then maybe some of those other ones would go to a contracting source. So now I'll talk a little bit about the approach that we use to update the formula. It's actually still in process. So I'll start with what we've done so far and what the next steps are. The first step was to select an initial subset of bridges. And those bridges consisted of um, a variety of different types of structures, variety of different ADT, you know, kind of representative of the different formula factors. We queried the inventory and inspection data that related to those formula factors. So like the ADT, the structure type, the distance to uh, the crew location, the size, the deck area, those types of things. And we have additional data. We have maintenance data now that we can look at to try to calibrate the formula. Because that's the idea, is to calibrate the 1991 formula against um, the recommended level of maintenance. How do you calculate the recommended level of maintenance? We don't have enough resources to maintain all of our structures to that recommended level. 
but we want the formula to predict the labor hours needed to reach that recommended level of maintenance. So to calculate those recommended uh, maintenance hours for preventive maintenance, it, it's perhaps a little bit easier for those cyclical items. We looked at our timesheet information, um, so we track all of our uh, maintenance tasks within a SIMS maintenance module, which is through Bentley AssetWise, and then we also track them through our timesheet system, and we combine them together in a data analysis tool to get some cost information. So we took um, our timesheet information and our cost information and calculated average labor hours to perform certain types of preventive maintenance. So specifically, we focused on flushing, crack sealing, deck sealing, and joint sealing, poor joint sealing. And then for each of the bridges within the subset, we could either assign the actual hours that were identified through a timesheet query for that bridge, or within the last five years, or if they didn't have that data, we could assign then an average value. Because we found that average value, we divided it by a deck area, so then you could apply it to any other bridge just by multiplying it by the deck area. But then we're looking again at kind of an annual average of hours, and so we then had to divide those labor hours by the recommended frequency of that activity. So if you're crack sealing, you have a total number of labor hours. We recommend crack sealings performed at a five-year interval, so we divide those hours by five to get more of an annualized distribution of hours. For reactive maintenance, it's a little bit harder to predict. So typically what we did was we just looked, queried our timesheet data, took an average of the last five years, and applied that to each bridge structure within the, within the subset, and then combined the two together for the recommended level of maintenance. Then we compared the hours identified in that last step, so that was the recommended level of maintenance hours, to the hours calculated by the original 1991 formula. And then to kind of bring those lines together, we looked at solving for new empirical values for each of those factors. So as an example, I show the ADT factor on the screen again, right? So the empirical values are the 18, the 12, and the 8. And then you have your different bridge, number of bridges in each category, which was the greater than 10,000 ADT, between 2,000 and 10,000 ADT, and less than 2,000 ADT. So the idea was to use Excel Solver and we basically put the two hours next to each other and basically tried to solve for those new empirical values for all of these different formula factors so we could bring those curves a little bit closer together. Then the next step is to take a, another subset of bridges to see if we can verify what was performed in the first step. Do the new fa are the new factors or the new empirical values within the factors representative of now this second subset of bridges? Or do we need to refine them a little bit further? Do we need to add some of those additional categories because we're finding a, a larger impact due to higher levels of traffic or multiple lane bridges? The idea is to show some sort of statistical or data-driven calibration of that first set. We'll document that process and assumptions and we'll present it to the districts as here's the hours that the, formula, the new formula is predicting, again, to communicate that need because it does compete with a lot of other operational demands like snow and ice, like other asset maintenance, um, such as overhead signs, retaining walls, sound walls. But it does explain and justify that full-time equivalent need for bridge maintenance. And then after that, we're hoping to develop a formula for bridge inspection and for non-bridge work, because again, those, there's competing resources for bridge maintenance, inspection, and non-bridge structural work, so work on uh, some of those other non-bridge assets I mentioned, like overhead signs, signals, lighting, um, retaining walls, sound walls, those types of assets. Thank you. Any questions? So once you develop all the uh, <clears throat> formulas to determine how much, you know, how many workers you need, is the, the state legislature or wherever you get your workers, are they, um, you know, forthcoming in, in providing the, the job openings and the positions needed to complete all that, that work? Well, I get, like I mentioned previously, it may not be in a manner of full-time employees for our bridge complement, but we're looking at, you know, supplementing that. Each district would look at supplementing that perhaps in different ways. It could look at the temporary, more temporary summer help with certain maintenance activities. We may identify bridges that where it makes more sense to actually do more contract maintenance on. For example, those that take more resources 
um, from our bridge crews because they require um, additional access, they require sophisticated traffic control, those types of things. And so it probably will be solved in a variety of different ways. Um, there might be some cases where we just have to prioritize some of the work too and not necessarily get it all accomplished. So just a quick question on using MBIs versus element level data. Is, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I alluded to that a little bit in my condition slide. Uh, trying to figure out the right condition to utilize for identifying certain types of work, right? Because we talked about DEC NBI, and DEC NBI can be used to predict certain types of preservation activities, right? When you look at the overlays or you look at replacing the DEC, and that's usually done on a more frequent level than something perhaps on the superstructure or substructure level. But from a maintenance standpoint, there are so many different components so many different elements, I should say, that we may need to work on throughout the life of a bridge. And it's really hard to predict what you might have to work on, right? Because it's in response to an identified condition. So if we had perhaps some additional metric that we were looking at that was more focused on the element level condition ratings, we may be better able to uh, address those specific areas. Uh, we are um, hoping to develop more of some sort of element level health index in the future to help with some of um, identifying maintenance and preservation activities. One piece of the puzzle, Tim. Is your expectation that you're properly staffed now or that you need to hire staff? Likely we are not staffed to the recommended level that we need. Um, in 1991 when they ran the formula, I believe they were, I think I had it in one of my slides, they were staffed at, in 1991 they were staffed at 98 but the formula recommended 140 FTEs, and that was based on the 1991 formula. And we are at 120 specifically dedicated to bridge maintenance, right around 120 right now. Thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.